The city of Santa Rosa in the Philippines and the neighboring towns of Binan, Cabuyo, and Salang are regularly being hit by increasingly stronger storms. The massive amounts of rain overwhelm the Salang Santa Rosa River and flood large parts of these towns. The inundations destroy public infrastructure disrupt the operation of businesses and damage the property of citizens. The flood is really that fast that the vehicle along the road was not able to uh, get out from the, from the flood. Our appliances uh, uh, just float, even the refrigerator, so we have to, uh, uh, to hold it, uh, but my washing machine was getting out already. Everybody now is affected. Our uh, river banks are full of uh, informal settlers. So uh, they are the first one, of course, to be affected. So there are some uh, lives lost because uh, they were uh, drowned. So uh, it's uh, really a sad experience for us. University of the Philippines Los Banos professor Damasa Macandong dedicates her life to the study of the rivers in this area of the Philippines. Now that we have climate change, uh, we have um, more typhoons, strong typhoons, bringing in lots of rains. And uh, in the past few years, uh, it has always been experienced that they have flash floods and flooding, causing much disaster. While global climate change is resulting in stronger storms and more rain in this area, it is not the only culprit creating increased risks and vulnerabilities from flooding. The midstream and downstream areas of the Santa Rosa Silang subwatershed had undergone rapid urbanization and industrialization in the past two and a half decades. Plantations there were sold to uh, multinationals and to private corporations, and uh, they have started to set up um, industries in there. There were lots of opportunities, uh, job opportunities. So there was massive uh, migration into the area. New housing developments for the growing population, as well as roads and other public infrastructure, were built to meet rising demand. Former agricultural areas and forests were paved over to construct all of this. But while water could infiltrate and be absorbed by farmland and forests, Paved surfaces create increased runoff as they are impermeable and cannot absorb the rainwater. And this development would lead to more water running off the surface of the land uh, when there is high intensity rainfall, leading to frequent flooding in the downstream areas. This rapid conversion posed a great problem. To solve the problems of severe flooding around the Salang Santa Rosa River, the towns and local governments need an innovative approach to development so they can minimize the risks of climate change impacts and increase their local resilience. But policymakers will only take action if presented with definitive evidence of the disastrous consequences of paving over agricultural lands and forests. So Professor Makandong and her team of hydraulic modeling specialists set out to create a computer model of the watershed by combining satellite images with population, land use and rainfall data. She also reached out to her colleague Isao Endo from Japan's Institute for Global Environmental Strategies for support. We are trying to develop a flood hazard map. We would like to understand not only the current uh, risk, but also the future risk in terms of the flooding in the future. Their collaboration evolved into the Participatory Watershed Land Use Management Project. It's an international cooperation. From our side, we bring our expertise in GIS and remote sensing techniques. Uh, the University of the Philippines brings uh, their expertise in hydrologic modeling. Those are the key uh, components that we use to produce flood hazard uh, maps. Experts from the two institutions were soon working together in the Philippines and Japan.
In order to understand the future risks of flooding, they first get in touch with the four local government units that comprise the Salang Santa Rosa watershed, which in addition to Santa Rosa and Salang also include Cabuyao and Binan. They ask government officials to draw maps depicting the ways they are planning to use the land in the near future and how their development projections will change the use of land. With this information, they are creating a flood hazard map that simulates the conditions of the watershed in 2025. Using this model, they are able to predict that massive floods would swamp the towns when typhoons hit in the future. If, if this area is flooded, so mm. we can tell the exact number of houses or sure. the, 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 the people living in this one. Surprisingly, even the Santa Rosa City Hall would be underwater. It would be good if we can show this to the local government because yeah. they haven't seen this kind of uh, flood uh, hazard map yeah. based on actual science. This, uh, this would be very good uh, if they, they could have this one. So the team brought together relevant government officials from all four local government units to show them the flood hazard maps and make them aware of the dangers posed by climate change. For these local government units, working together at the watershed level is extremely important. We are all interrelated. So what happens, like for example in Silang Cavite, when there is um, very strong rain and the, flood, the water will not just stay in Silang Cavite, but will go down to the city of Santa Rosa. Although urbanization in Silang and other upstream areas of the watershed affects downstream communities like Santa Rosa, the towns do not consult with each other when creating their land use plans. We have to know what their plans are, um, what their problems are, most especially in terms of flooding, because it will eventually affect us. Recognizing the importance of tackling this problem at the watershed level in an integrated manner, the four local government units have teamed up to create the Integrated Watershed Management Council for the Salang Santa Rosa Watershed, an important formal space for collaboration where development and land use plans can be discussed and harmonized. And while it may be impossible to stop urbanization altogether, key countermeasures to reduce flooding and help towns adapt to climate change could be implemented. These in turn promote development for the local populations that is more resilient and climate sensitive. For instance, to avoid the clogging of waterways, the city of Santa Rosa deploys environmental armies that clean the trash from the rivers and remove vegetation that could obstruct the flow of the river. And they also dredge the riverbed. We are proposing this activity with the uh, city government of Santa Rosa. We would like to use this as a model case. We would like to replicate these activities to other local governments. Corporations like car manufacturer Toyota are also pitching in to solve flooding problems in the watershed. The Save Silang Santa Rosa River Foundation is a, a foundation dedicated in uh, uh, protecting the river system of uh, Silang Santa Rosa uh, with uh, companies located along the river system. Companies that are members of the foundation have pledged to protect the trees and other vegetation growing on the banks of the river near their facilities to allow rainwater to infiltrate the ground and make it more difficult for the river to overflow. Other countermeasures still need to be implemented in the watershed, but the expertise to make them happen may already exist in the Philippines. For example, an effective way to reduce rainwater runoff is to use permeable pavement which allows water to infiltrate the ground, like this one used in the parking lot of the eco-friendly building of the Laguna Lake Development Authority in Manila. In the Salang Santa Rosa watershed, 
The participatory watershed land use management project team of the Institute for Global Environmental Strategies and the University of the Philippines Los Banos are effectively using science to influence policy in order to reduce the impacts and risks of natural disasters. It's my vision that the Santa Rosa Silang sub-watershed would be a model sub-watershed in the country that despite the urbanization and industrialization that it, it has been undergoing, that it is able to uh, maintain or sustain the, the ecology of the whole sub-watershed that the land use that they are implementing would be sustainable. Communities facing similar disasters around the world could also use this proven approach to adapt to the growing impacts of global climate change and make their own development more resilient and sensitive to the changing climate.